Well, we left off here. I already went through this definition on cost-benefit versus cost-effectiveness. So let's get into cost-benefit analysis. So I'll use a little case study here for testing for a faulty product on a manufacturing line. All right? So that's something we can all get our arms around and also is something that uh, helps to serve to highlight that cost-benefit analysis is in no way peculiar only to our world of diagnostics. You can use this for anything. So um, <clears throat> here I've got uh, a histogram <clears throat> that shows a gold standard negative or true negative population and some gold standard positive or true positive population. So just like what we've seen before. And um, I choose uh, right now, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose some threshold to operate at. And I happen to choose this point right here. <clears throat> and what it says is that everything to the left, I'm going to predict as a negative or call as negative, right? Say it's negative. And everything to the right, I'm going to say is positive. So it's just like what we've seen before. No difference. And from this, I put together uh, my so-called confusion matrix. And again, we saw this at the very, very beginning of the course. So I know from my gold standard distributions, from my true positive and true negative distributions, uh, what I have. And then my test comes back. So these are my test results, test positive, test negative. So these are correct positives, correct negatives, and likewise, false positives and false negatives. Okay. And I happen to have a total of 500 in each of those categories. So I'm just laying out the, the basics of this little case study here. So now I can calculate a sensitivity and, and a specificity, again, just at this arbitrary threshold that I set at 60. All right, that was my arbitrary uh, value for the, for the threshold. And I get a sensitivity of 62%, specificity of 96%. And that is one sensitivity specificity pair, which gives us one point on the rock curve, all right? One spot on the rock curve. Now, I can sweep that threshold throughout the entire parameter space. In other words, let me just back up. I'm now going to take the threshold. Instead of arbitrarily setting it here, I'm going to set it way over here, and I'm going to stepwise move it. And every time I move it, I'm going to recalculate all of the respective areas. Correct negative area, correct positive area, false positive area, false negative area, right? I'm going to redo all those areas, reevaluate the algebraic expressions for sensitivity and specificity, get a new sensitivity, a new pair, and then move the threshold over one more notch. And when I do that, I then generate this, and so... You know, I, I did this about every, it uh, looks like what I did was about every uh, three hundredths. I, 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 I moved the threshold by three hundredths at a, at a time and generated this rock curve. So, um, so now let's find the optimum threshold <clears throat> without using cost-benefit analysis. So this is just the mathematical way that we kind of learned about right toward, right before we went on break. And in a moment, I'm going to come back to the whole manufacturing.